Wolf came into my room. Talk to me every night. He only stood on his feet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful planet, whatever you guys are, I'm your reaction host, Shiraz. Now, if you guys remember my last episode, I was talking about a video that I wanted to do, a very special kind of a video, because when I, when I, when I first came across this video, it, en it encompassed a lot of the things that we kind of showcase on this channel. It talks a lot about, you know, like the things that kind of go bump in the dark and, um, you know, anything from scary, creepy, paranormal. Uh, it also encompasses skinwalkers, UFOs. Um, it, it, it really had a lot of the elements that, that I knew you guys would be interested in. Now... What really intrigued me about this video was just the way the content was laid out. And not only that, you know, a lot of the times, like, I mean, when, when we look at content and when you guys are watching, right, when you guys are watching this stuff, yeah, there, there, there are going to be, there are going to be clips that are going to be kind of more on the humorous side of things, you know, unrealistic, kind of like memes, right? And we get that. There's there's going to be a number, a, a, a large percentage of that stuff that's going to be out there, and, and a lot a lot of stuff that's going to be kind of fake, you know, fake news, stuff that yeah was probably debunked or what have you. But what really intrigued me, as I was mentioning about this video, was the fact that the guy that put this video together, all right, and I'm going to have the links in the description, by the way, to this gentleman to his video, to his channel, uh, so you guys can subscribe to him and, and, and really get immersed into the kind of content that he puts out. And I was just floored. I was just floored because this, to me, was very credible. It, it came right from the source. And to top it all off, the story that we're going to show you today revolves around the youtuber and his family himself right so it's not like i'm reacting to somebody else's reaction video slash reaction 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 i mean this is about this youtube star's personal personal things that happened to him and his family and and he's bringing it out in kind of like a documentary kind of a form so i hope you guys like it uh, if you guys haven't already, I hope you smash the like, subscribe, comment. If you guys comment and if you include right at the end of the comment where you guys are from, I can definitely give you guys a shout out. So please, please watch this video with an open mind. And as I always mentioned before, as every time, every time we have these videos, I, I always tell you guys, listen, real or fake, that's a decision you need to make. So, without further ado, I want to get to this video. I hope you guys like it. Like I said, I was very intrigued by it. It really piqued my curiosity to the point where I want to start to kind of do more videos on, on these topics. So, I hope you guys have your beverage. I hope you guys are ready. Strap in. We're about to go flying. Let's get it. So, it's called Whispers in the Dark, the real stories of the witching hour. And... Um, the, the gentleman who puts this together is Ghost Toe Spooks. Ghost Toe Spooks. All one word, Jeremy Sanchez. This is a true story involving my brother Justin and sister-in-law, Brianna, living on a plot of land somewhere in Socorro County, New Mexico. They've often shared tales about the unusual happenings in their home. Think of it like the setting of Courage the Cowardly Dog, an isolated house in the middle of nowhere. You're about to see some real footage taken during my stay at their trailer home. It's a landscape of vast fields and dirt 
stretching for acres around, with only a few distant houses in sight. Wow. As clearly seen in this footage, the nearest houses belong to kin and friends, creating a tightly knit community. Freaking thunder. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? It's a perfectly nice day. Uh, but there's a behind that mountain, the M mountain. Yeah, behind that mountain. Oh, wow. There's a, like missiles. No, we don't know what it is. We just have explosions like that. Sometimes they're louder than that, or we can hear them inside too. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay, so now that I'm recording, we're just talking about that giant plume of black smoke. <laughs> that's sort of proof that they're, I guess that's our proof. Because like people, like I don't want people to think we're adding in like those rumbling effects. Oh, right. Like like people do online, like, oh, I heard this I mean, New Mexico, like, guys, has a lot sorry. of military bases yeah, and people things, people so I wouldn't be surprised if it's something yeah. along those lines, so. It is rare for them to have unexpected visitors, given how well the house is tucked away. Hills and unwelcoming dirt roads encircle it. And from the highway, it's particularly invisible due to the large trees that deftly mask the trailer home, especially in the summertime. It would take a proper invitation with detailed instructions or a lost wanderer to visit this house. What makes these stories especially unsettling is the sheer remoteness of their home. Yeah, definitely being remote, being far away from, from civilization, so to speak. In late 2019, my nieces and nephews began telling tales of a quote, bad guy, who would visit them in the middle of the night. Hey Justin! Bro! How are you? Pointing toward her room? No, she was pointing, pointing towards this like, little area here. Uh, just in, into the darkness. Yeah, into the darkness. <laughs> and like, because the, the, all these other out, the only light that was on was... Uh, the movie light. The movie light. And it's like, you know, and then the heater. Here, like, oh, okay. So this here, like, what? Can I hear like it? That's the only light like, Are you bringing it in here, babe? Yeah, yeah. So, look, this key light here. And so everything else is dark, right? That's the only light that was on here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, God damn it. You know, so, like, Initially, my brother and sister-in-law dismissed it as child's play. Kids being kids with their wild imaginations. But bit by bit, more details about this bad guy began to emerge. On separate occasions, the children would insist that a coyote would visit my niece's bedroom window guys. and speak to her. This is scary stuff. too crazy for the average country home in the area to have animals venturing on the property at night. And as for the talking, that could easily be chalked up to imagination. But what puzzled my brother was that their trailer home was elevated, making it quite difficult for a person let alone a coyote, to peer through this window without assistance. So one afternoon, months later, 
My sister-in-law Brianna invites a friend over for lunch. As they finish their chat, her friend casually mentions, So, who was the man outside? Confused, Brianna asked what she meant. And her friend would go on to explain that she saw a very tall man dressed in Native American garb standing in the field in front of their house. Casually, she waved at him, thinking he must be an acquaintance. She asked again, Did you guys hire somebody to do yard work or something? To which my sister-in-law replies, No. There's nobody here but us. Needless to say, my brother and sister-in-law got very little sleep the following nights. Because this wasn't the first sighting of a man near the house, nor would it be the last. You know, as I was mentioning, living far away, it's pretty scary stuff, guys. Anything can happen, strangers can come visit. If you found this channel today from one of my various social media posts, I'd like to invite you on this journey as we explore the very strange occurrences that happened at this house and on this land. And along the way, I'll leave it up to you to decide what you believe. So it's been about three years since I have been in that house. Actually, maybe more. I didn't stay there for long. I was only there, I want to say a couple of months. Honestly, I don't know a lot about the house. You gotta hand it to Jeremy, man. He, he knows how to put a good story together. This flag is a matchstick. Like, we are alerted. We were, we, we were alerted all the time. Like, you know, whatever somebody would uh, even get near. What the hell? It's Dude. like embossed into the wall. What? I do remember the first time that my brother told me about any of this stuff, though. It was 2019, and I was living in Phoenix at the time. And he had been staying in this new house with his new girlfriend. And I remember him telling me that it was really creepy there. He said it was out in the middle of the desert and we described it as the Courage the Cowardly Dog House. And one of the first things he told me was about this figure. Do you remember the first thing that you experienced in the house? When, uh, when I first visited Brianna, like when we were like barely started dating, I was just sitting on the floor, like, you know, leaning up against the couch in the living room. And, um, like, wow. He said he saw a man Whoa. standing in Brianna's bedroom looking at him. And I see, like, the silhouette of, like, a man kind of, like, peek out from behind the door and, like, look at me. You know, like, they just kind of wave, like, hello, you know, like, thinking that, it, you know, it was probably, like, her grandpa, I don't know, her dad, I don't know, I have no idea. She was putting Evie, Evie 
bad. Like I didn't, I didn't even mention anything to her or whatever. Because I just, I you know, we just started like seeing each other, so I didn't think it was my first job. Like who's the old guy living with you or whatever? Like I didn't, you know, I didn't want to ask anything like that. I just assumed that somebody lived with her, right? At the time, this was just all stories. I just heard a loud thump. Really loud. I had no idea that I would ever visit this house, honestly. I also remember my brother would tell us about these things that would happen whenever they would. The second time was the voices. But of course the voices, we'll get into that way later. So he had said he saw this man who kind of was staring at him from the other room. And when he confronted Brianna about it, she had to come clean. I was like, I was kind of curious. I was like, I was like, oh, you know, I, I said something like, like, uh, does your dad live with you or your grandpa? And he's like, no, why? A couple of weeks later, we're living together. Right, and I asked you about, like, who you had over that night. And you were like, there was nobody here. I don't think we were living together yet. I just visited. That. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was like, you know, who was that, that guy? Like, you know, was it your grandpa or something? And that's when you're like, oh, okay. Like, that's when I was like, do you believe in ghosts? Because <laughs> yeah. you can't just come out and say that stuff because then people <laughs> think you're crazy. But then you were like, yeah, I do. It's like, Oh, thank goodness. All right, so here's the deal. <laughs> I got an old man and a little girl <laughs> in my house. And she was kind of like hesitant to like tell me, you know, because she didn't know if I like believed in ghosts or not, you know, uh -huh. at the time. Wow. And she's like, oh, it's like this apparition of a of an old man that is here for some reason and i was like really and uh and she was like there's also a little girl here like a little blonde girl you know also i gotta connect this so let me try this again yeah yeah and so like i, I hadn't Bluetooth, seen a little girl Bluetooth. until months later like we're already right and i was like Leaving ghosts. Because <laughs> you can't just come out and say that stuff because then people think you're crazy. But then you were like, yeah, I do. I was like, oh, thank goodness. All right, so here's the deal. <laughs> I got an old man and a little girl <laughs> in my house. And she was kind of like hesitant to like tell me, you know, because she didn't know if I like believed in ghosts or not, you know, uh -huh. at the time. And she's like, oh, it's like I, this I didn't even know how the apparition of, a, of an old man that is here for some reason. And I was like, really? And, uh, and then she was like, there's also a little girl here, like a little blonde girl, you know, also. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I, I hadn't seen a little girl like, until months later, like we're already, I had moved in, right? So I didn't, like, you were really seeing a little girl uh, until, like, probably, like, a, a few months later. And I thought I saw out of the corner of my eye running back to her room. And I was like, come, play, come pick up your toys. Yeah. And the little girl just kept running. But uh, Evie was a lot, like, smaller at the time. I was like, oh. Um, Evie was like two, so she's like very small, right? Like a small child. And this uh, child that I saw was like, I would say probably like seven, you know what I'm saying? Seven or eight. 
you know, like that, that tall, you know what I'm saying, like that, yeah. that approximate age, I literally saw, not even like, like, it was like plain as day, and I was like, Evie, Evie, like, you know, I was like, but I only saw the top of her head, like, like, um, walking away. And I thought it was weird because it was a, like, she seemed taller to me. And I was like, and it was like, I'm right here, Dad. And she like had her toys and I was like, go put them away. Just go put them away. <laughs> my chair is like, and I was like, like this. falling off my chair here. I don't even know if we have time to get into the, the voices. That was the scariest oh, yeah. thing. The voices are definitely the creepiest one. Like definitely the old man and the little girl don't give me like the no. chills or nothing, but the voices, I don't think it's them and it gives me the creeps. Cause it's, you can feel it's like an ominous, like yeah. bad feeling. It's a here. dark feeling. It's like, it's scary. Like, but you had to be a tall man that tall something. To be able to, wow, to saying something that might come as a surprise to all of you. I'm a skeptic. When I went to this house, I didn't expect to experience anything. It was never a thought in my mind that I would actually experience anything myself. I remember the day pretty vividly and I was sleeping on the couch when it happened. But before that, we'll go to my brother's story. Um, it was the scariest, it has been the scariest thing and I hope yeah. I don't ever hear the voices again. But I think that the voices that we're hearing is the coyote. I think that's possible. Yeah, I think it is. So we're in, a, in bed and we're, you know, doing adult. We're having adult things, time. And both of us stop. What was that? And because we hear, we hear a voice outside the, of our of bedroom window. It was clearly a man's voice, like a deep a, voice. A deep voice. And according to them, this voice was right up against their window. To this day, when my brother does oh. his impression of those voices, it gives me the chills. Yeah. You couldn't make out what it, exactly what it was saying, but it was like, Definitely like, like, yeah. and it was like, what the? So we stopped immediately and we got up and we turned That's off the lights. That's how you know you're not crazy though, because we both stopped. We both stopped. At the same we time. Heard it. And we were like, and it was definitely coming from outside the window. Yeah. Like right at the window, too. Well, and, and for it to. To be, be coming from where it was coming from. It was like at our window. It, it was wasn't right down below. The, Jesus. There's something so creepy about my brother's impression of those voices. Yeah. I actually think it's because when he does that impression, it sounds very much like some sort of Native American chant. <laughs> can, can you imagine? And although I did experience a couple of things in that house, I can't imagine hearing that outside the window 
I would have gotten the hell out of there. And we look at the window and there's nothing there. It's dark, right? So then I get the gun and I rush outside. And our cows at the time, that's where they usually sleep, in that corner where our window is. Yeah. And they were way over here on the opposite side of the, of the yard, and they were looking that way. And uh, it was a windy night. It was windy and yeah, like- Yeah, it was like- They were clearly uneasy. Storm. Because by that time they were asleep, for sure. I was like, what, one, one o'clock in the morning? Probably. And um, yeah. it's like, I have this gun and like, I cock it and stuff, and I'm like looking around and stuff, and I have to go around the whole property. And um, I don't find anything. And I go back around, because like, I swear there's a, there's a man outside the window. There's a man somewhere on here. So then, you know, I didn't know how to release the hair, pick, uh, hair trigger. Just let off a shot. It was like, Pah. But and scared the sh out of me waiting inside. That was the first time. The second time. We were watching a movie, or we're just talking in bed. We're watching. A movie. Yeah, we were just sitting in bed talking. We're sitting in bed talking before bedtime. And the bedtime. kids were asleep. Um, we're we're just hanging out, talking about stuff as you usually do before bed. And again, yeah. But this time it was right outside our bedroom door. It was right outside and our bedroom door. And this is the first and oh, only Jesus. time it's ever been in our Inside house. Inside the house. Yeah. And so I thought that the kids had kicked on the, the the DVD player or the PlayStation. Yeah, we both thought it was a movie. And we kind of both looked at each other like, yeah, yeah, yeah. those damn kids. The kids are awake. <laughs> it's a door, dude, and it's all quiet. Hold on. Kids are asleep. And nothing was on. Nothing was on. Not a light. Nothing. It was dark. Yeah, and I closed the door and I was like, everybody just sleep. Please tell me you're joking. I think that night we were like both freaked out. It had that that dark feeling yeah, that to like, it. Which I, I've never gotten from the old man here. He no. has more of a protective feeling. And he doesn't say anything. And he doesn't he's but never spoken. That thing was like it was a dark hear. feeling. That, that was, was creepy. Scary. I think that was the scariest just because... That was the scariest one. That's, that's the first and only time I was in the house. Um, this sounds a little superstitious and witchy, but I made some black protection salt. And I yeah. put it on the windowsill. It's the only place I really put it. To go back to what I said at the beginning of this video, I do remember experiencing a few things. It was a very early morning and I was already awake, just laying there. For some reason that night, I slept on the couch. I really, really wanted to make some coffee, but that house just creeped me out during the night, man. The sun hadn't come up yet, and all the light that there was, was from those creepy red, chilly lights. So I'm there, just laying down. I remember the baby started crying, and that's when I heard it. Probably as clear as I'm speaking into this microphone right now, I heard a woman say, Wow, wow. 
Ow. I'm coming, I'm coming. As being disembodied. Because I had just seen my sister-in-law's mother the night before. And this sounded like her. But she wasn't even there. And this voice sounded kind of nurturing. As if it was a grandmother coming to tend to her crying grandbaby. You know, I saw this thing recently that said, and I don't think I agree with it, but it's a, I guess, theorization or whatever, that there's no such thing as ghosts, that they're all demons. But so, how would you explain the old man and little girl? That's what I'm I, saying. I'm, I don't have a bad feeling for Well, them. maybe they are demons, but are there good demons? Like, what is a demon compared to a ghost? I don't know. Like, and if difference? you believe in demons, could it be angels? Yeah, what's, yeah, because it's like demons, like, is that just a word? You equate them, demons, as being bad, evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evil. yeah. Right. so devil's workers. Uh -huh. So saying that it was like, sage in the house. all ghosts are actually demons trying to or infiltrate your home spirits. or your spirit or your children or, you know, mm -hmm. like that. And just like pretending to be a also, benevolent go like, spirit in your house or whatever. But I was like, mm. we've had this little girl and old man for a long time and I don't feel anything bad. Rolling hills Rolling. of rural New Mexico sits a house that is surrounded New Mexico. by the eerie There's always something yet gorgeous scary in New Mexico. southwestern landscape. Once a loving home to a small family and their pets. But when the sun falls and the clock strikes three, things become quite different. Three in the morning, guys. Everything As a skeptic, at three in the morning. I never had any fear of this house initially. And looking back, I tend to think we were just scaring ourselves. Until the creation of this series, I hadn't looked at this footage in years. And as I'm creating these episodes week by week, my memories are resurrected. I'm beginning to think that maybe I was wrong to dismiss it. This is the witching hour. Oh, what a segue, guys. The witching hour. And the stories told here are 100% true. Whether you want to believe them or not is entirely up to you. So I said before that I'm a skeptic. I really do think that most of the time people are just scaring themselves and being silly. I just have to be honest, as I'm going through the stuff that happened and finding things that either I forgot happened or in one case, finding that I caught something on a recording that I did not see at the time. I do feel like I'm becoming less and less skeptical, especially oh when it comes to my own experiences. There was always bumps in the night and that could be attributed to the cats and possible wildlife hiding underneath the trailer home, which does happen. 
because I hear we hear thumps and like we have cats and dogs and stuff, but the cats get crazy around four o'clock. Um, but we can distinguish the cats from the abnormal sounds. Well, we can distinguish everybody's sounds. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we know I mean, which child is running to our room. Yeah, by the so fall even, of the even if we can hear the child, we know by the footfall which child it is. Yeah. So we definitely know that that sound wasn't made by an animal or a, ch or a child. Well, sometimes it does sound like a child because the little girl is a child. Yeah, but like. Um, like a little girl? So, like, it can be a similar sound, but then you go check it out and all the kids are asleep. Right, right. Or nobody's there. Like, there's the stuff that, that gives you that creepy feeling, the hair on the back of your neck feeling. Right. But the little stuff like that never it's like, gives uh, us that. We're like, oh, whatever. There was one instance where I heard a loud crash while I was in the restroom. Yesterday, uh, I was in the restroom, and, um, like, I heard, like, a loud bang and crash, like, right outside the fucking, I was like, what the hell? Like, I thought, like, th there was a pan that, I don't know. I don't outside know this fuck. bathroom door? Yeah, it was, I thought it must have been, like, a pot or a pan. It's like, I was like, crash. I heard that last night. And I was like, oh. And then I, and the I immediately opened the door to see Bella the dog just sitting there calm as ever and no commotion whatsoever i see wow. bella standing there and i'm just like and i look like and there's nothing there and i was like i was just <laughs> <I'm going laughs> i heard there. it last night and somehow the toolbox in the back room was out and fallen onto the dryer and there oh, was tools the all over the floor really oh, yeah that toolbox is heavy it's super heavy. It weighs about 20 pounds. Cats can't move the toolbox. I know, and it was... I didn't know what had happened. I... Hmm. On one occasion, I actually heard a growl. I straight up heard some crazy growling right outside the window. Bella. hearing growls like I like that was like heavy growl but it's like what the f I never see anything They're in the attic. No, no, sorry, they're outside. Like on the porch or deck. And it looks like they're in like a very secluded area. Wow. Surely we can see something. just gonna ask was it the dog was it Bella the dog but no the dog was barking at whatever was making this growling noise
Like right here, I can hear like heavy growl. And then, and then Bella's fucking barking at it, and I was like, I heard it before. Faint. I heard it like heavy. I was like, what the? Fuck? Like a deep growl, dude. Like a crazy. I never heard it too. Like, that's not a. Is that a coyote? Dude? No. I don't know what the it is. It? It's like a deep, like. Yeah, like a. Like, 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 what the? Yeah, dude. Did you hear that? At night? Yeah, I was like, that's. Was... At night, you'll hear like the. A... Yeah. And it's weird because like, I never see anything around here. Yeah, there was like, I expected there to be a couple coyotes or something. Yeah, or like, dogs. and I'll hear her barking, like, <laughs> like that scary bark she does. Yeah. And I hear like a, a deep growl, but there's, I never, like, that's all I ever hear. Wow. And I'm like, I go out there yeah. and there's nothing ever around. Yeah. Yeah, because Wow, I wonder what that was. I actually didn't remember this until I was going through my notes, which I have here. You can see that I wrote down, or I typed rather, um, right here. Jeremy's experience hearing Justin. I don't remember this night too much, but what I do remember is peeking my head outside of the bedroom door, calling it Justin, because I heard him say something. And I'm just like, Justin, what's up? Justin. And of course, that feeling of dread that you get when you realize that something is not right. And here's something that I did not mention in the previous episode, which is that I too actually saw the little girl. So what, what is it about this little So I was girl sitting that... on the sofa one night and all the lights were off. My sister-in-law Brianna was asleep on the ground. I was watching a weird, this is so weird. I just realized this. I was watching a thing about wolves and Native Americans on the TV. That's crazy. It's just crazy. Because it's one of the, like the three channels that they had out there. And it had to do with wolves and Native Americans. That is so weird, man. That's so weird. I genuinely, I genuinely just realized that. Like I remembered that all this, but I never connected the dots. That's insane. So I'm there watching this documentary series and I see a little girl who at the time my brain just perceives as my niece Evie. And I see her run across from one side of the kitchen to the other. too much of it at first but after a few seconds went by and she didn't run back I just got curious as to what she was doing in the kitchen so late so I get up and I walk beyond the wall and there's nothing there Nobody's there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, when I saw the girl, um, but yeah, I waited like a couple of days to, like, it, it wasn't until like I think you guys were talking about it, and I was like, oh yeah, I saw, I saw that girl. <laughs> yeah. Because um, because you asked him what color hair she had, and I didn't want to say, and then you're like blonde, and I was like, I was like, oh, 
it was flat. <laughs> and um, yeah, dude, it was way taller than. Yeah. So she could fit right in with the family. And, it, and uh, <laughs> what my brain did was like, when you see a basketball, like bounce, you, it hits the floor, and it, what if it just stuck? And your brain would be like, no, it's supposed to bounce. It's right. so like, what the hell? Uh, and then the same way, like when the girl ran, for one, I heard no footsteps, and secondly, I was waiting for her to run back. I was waiting for her to, to see her. And, I was, and then it wasn't until like, a few seconds where I was just like, I think you were still knocked out on the floor. Oh, probably. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, so I get up and and then I just go to the kitchen and I'm just like, and I just go and sit back down and I'm just like, I wait for you to come out of the shower. I'm just like, because yeah, you had laid down by the space here and you knocked yeah. out. Right, right. In the middle and this of the is night, coming from the guy who doesn't believe in ghosts. And now he lives here. And you know something's not right. I've forgotten half of this stuff even happened. And there's a couple of things that we caught on camera that I didn't realize we caught at the time. And let's just say that these things that I caught have to do with something in the sky. Something in the sky. Oh boy. Number one, Roswell, New Mexico. One of the most famous UFO incidents in history occurred at Roswell in 1947. That's right. When an unidentified flying object crashed near the town and the US military itself initially reported this object as a quote, flying disc. They later changed their description to a weather balloon. Of course. Number two. White Sands Missile Range. This military testing facility in southern New Mexico has been the site of numerous missile and rocket tests. It's also located near the Trinity site, where the first atomic bomb was detonated in 1945. White Sands continues to be a hub for UFO activity. Number three, Kirtland Air Force Base. This major US Air Force Base has been the subject of UFO sightings some believe that experimental aircraft and secretive military projects could be responsible for some of the sightings in the region. Number four, Holloman Air Force Base. Located near Alamogordo, New Mexico, another significant Air Force Base in the area. It has also been linked to UFO sightings, with some suggesting that advanced aircraft testing may be mistaken for UFOs. That's a possibility. Number five, right? Dulce. The small town in northern New Mexico has gained attention due to alleged underground bases and claims of extraterrestrial encounters. Number six, what? Manzano Mountains. Some UFO reports have come from this mountain range, which is close to Kirtland Air Force Base. The rugged terrain and remote location may contribute to the unusual sightings. Why Number seven, all these UFO Socorro, New Mexico. Have military bases. In 1964, Socorro. Sergeant Lonnie Zamora was in pursuit of a speeding vehicle when this something in the sky story. caught his eye. This object was so perplexing to him that he decided to abandon his pursuit and instead pursue it. Oh. After seeing it land in an arroyo, he continued to approach it with his eyes deceiving him, telling him that this had to be some sort of vehicle that was overturned in the dirt. But as he got closer, he realized this was no car. Instead, what he saw was an egg-shaped object resting in the dirt amongst its landing gear. And beside it, what he described as two large, childlike beings in white coveralls. Whoa. As he exited his vehicle and realized what he was looking at, he became frightened and called for backup. As he was doing so, he heard a loud roar and witnessed brilliant blue flames emitting from the egg-shaped object, which was now in the air. Before he knew it, the craft was gone, and when backup arrived, he had no choice but to describe what it was that he witnessed that day. I didn't know about this incident, unfortunately, while I was staying in Socorro. Otherwise, I would have gone to the site. It should be noted that the site that is public is not the actual landing site of this craft. In fact, it's a facade, and the real landing site 
is said to be close by it. Interesting. I don't even Maybe know where to, to begin with this up. because the list I just read you all, there's some. so much about it that I can say. And uh, I'll start with White Sands. White Sands is very close to where I live. It's actually like 30 minutes to the east. And I happen to know somebody who will remain nameless, who does work at White Sands. And this guy is constantly sending me photos of the objects in the sky that he is witness to on a weekly basis. While he and I share differing opinions about what these crafts are and the nature of the beings that operate them, one thing is certain, we both believe 100% that these are real anomalies. Wow, Since magic. I've moved to Las Cruces, New Mexico, I've had an acquaintance, well, we'll call her a sibling, that is highly enthusiastic about these sightings. And in fact, every time she comes to visit, she passes by a place just west of here called Deming, New Mexico. And for a period of time, every time she came to visit, she would see this rectangular object hovering in the same position as she drove by. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. There's a rectangular object in the sky. I've since been to and from, and I've never seen this object, unfortunately. And it's not but like what a I did see firsthand in the middle of the desert, passing through, you guessed it, White Sands, was a flying disc that I barely caught on video. My girlfriend and I were on our way back from seeing Ludacris a couple of months ago in Rio Doso, New Mexico. And to get to and from there, you actually have to drive past Alamogordo and White Sands. And I sh you not, as we're driving, we're listening to the episode of Joe Rogan where he's talking to Gabriel Iglesias. And as soon as they start talking about UFOs, I look to my right and I see a flat black object hovering in the sky, gliding wow. against the horizon. I pointed it out to my girlfriend who was driving and I proceeded to record. <laughs> I think maybe if, uh, if aliens are real, I think it'd be interesting. That Th there's a really podcast. Yeah, That's Joe the, Rogan that? talking to Gabriel Iglesias about UFOs. Meanwhile, there's a UFO right there in the what distance. The <sighs> what is that? I mean, the evidence, the data, everything is there. It's all there. What the hell? That is just bizarre. Clearly, that's not the shape of an airplane. Clearly, that's not the shape of a B-52 bomber. Okay, it's November 1st, and I'm editing this video. And as I'm going through this footage here of us in the car in White Sands, uh, I just noticed a second flying disc in the video. I guess we were too focused on where this one disappeared into the clouds. Austin. It's like pretty far gone. I can barely see it. Yeah, it's like wow, guys. Who's that? Country. White Sands, man. As a person who has been a UFO enthusiast all his life, I had never seen anything legitimate until I moved to New Mexico three years ago at 28 years old. And it just so happens that two of these things were captured in Socorro. One day my brother and I were driving back from Walmart, I believe, and we see a glowing object in the distance uh, sort of appear and disappear, and then we saw it again in a completely different area. The, f the valleys are too wide apart to tell, like, what the f Oh, the No, no. It's sort of changed positions. Oh, it's like, it's, it's moving. Oh, again. Oh. Huh, it's in the air. Um, is that... Can't traverse that. Oh, gosh, that's, that's, that's a lot of distance. Yeah, it's been a far. Yeah. Did you catch on my phone? Um, possibly. I mean, my phone's definitely aimed. 
looking at it, but I don't know if it's... It continued to seemingly fade in and out several miles away. My hope was to get to my brother's house at the time and continue recording. Unfortunately, this didn't happen, and I never looked back at this footage because Honestly, I was fairly certain that this thing was My memories of it, however, were a little different because as I was reviewing this footage, I was fully expecting for it to be broad daylight and my brain was already thinking of reasons that this was not a legitimate unidentified object. Thinking that the sun had to have been out and it could have very easily been a glare against the plane. But as you can see, this was not a sunny day. Hmm. Oh my gosh, guys. What do you guys think so far? <sighs> this is absolutely like incredible. The, in the mountains over there, out there. So yeah. Like flickering oh, on you got it? Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, this YouTuber we actually went again. through this. This is like his sky, family like, story. Slightly above, like, slightly above the mountains. Now, like, not even... Like, just barely? Yeah, just barely above it. Like, not even... No. It was this night that I peered out the window and began recording. This was the window of my niece's bedroom. And as I was recording, I captured something that I did not recognize at the time. I don't know how I didn't notice it, but it happened. You can see there's two lights in the distance. One of them appears to be oh, a yeah. glare on the window, and the other seems to be unidentified. That's sort of right. Kind of like the like right in the middle, right? Yeah. What is that? Do you know? It's a weird it's like. Outside. It's not inside. No, yeah, it's not. A, it's like not even a pinpoint of light like lights are. What the f is that? What the? F They're rectangular. Holy shit. Dude, what the? There's no, they they the literally one. just popped. There's a third one behind. There's three of them. That's not wow. a house, dude. Like, there's no house that. There's no way that's a house. My brother and I saw this in the moment and we were sort of freaked out about it and we recorded for a bit and decided to record again in the morning to see yeah. if there were any houses in the distance or lights. Uh, last night we saw uh, these lights. Neither of us could really remember what the hell is past this field here. It's outside. There's Justin and Brianna's yard and then there's a field. It's not theirs and then uh, and then there's a area that we couldn't remember what was what. So um, I wake up this morning and I come out here immediately to see what it was we were looking at last night because they looked like like windows or something. And then, uh, here's what we have. It's a damn house, people. We never, how has Justin ever, like, noticed this house, right? <laughs> I guess we're so used to looking in all directions, seeing nothing, that it's just never crossed our minds to think that there's a house there. But there is. Well, there was a house. <laughs> and those are the windows we're looking at. There's a window. Oh. The three windows are right here. Okay, 
okay, okay. So, uh, nothing spooky. Well, that debunks that. As I was recording the night before, I caught something that I wouldn't notice until three years later, just the other day. Okay, it is October 16th, 2023. I'm reviewing... Okay, so right now I'm making the third uh, episode of The Witching Hour. And I'm reviewing footage. And I, the whole time I'm like, I'm creeped out to... to I'm creeped out that I'm going to see something in the footage that I know was not there. Like, I'm creeped out I'm going to accidentally capture an EVP or there's going to be somebody standing or something. Okay. Oh, gosh. That'd be freaky. This <laughs> is... Okay. So, I'm looking at this video. I'm standing in his room at night. And um, I'm looking out the window. I don't exactly remember this specific night although I do remember plenty of things like that happening um, and I'm looking out the window looking for Bella I guess I guess my eyes are toward the ground but clearly I would have seen this I, if I if I, I would have seen this if it happened in front of my eyes but there is a f light a, a disc, I guess, that just shoots across the lower horizon. Uh, okay, so at this, I know, I know all this footage. I know where things are in the placement, and so I know it's hard for you guys to see. You. I think I just saw it. A strange, glowing object, just like the one wow. that I had seen in the daytime emerges seemingly out of nothing streaks across the sky wow. and disappears i was so perplexed when i saw this and if you it look closely like you can actually right see some sort of plume as it sort of poofs into reality now based on this footage from the daytime this object had to be small and close And I don't have any type of explanation for this. I'm actually pretty stoked that I caught that. Oh. Okay. So, the next thing I wanted to talk about. This one makes me smile. Yeah, it was breezy that night. It just and the cloud stayed, there. stayed there. Speaking of the that cloud and like, I was telling Justin the other day that a thought popped in my brain. I was like, "You guys have missing cows." And it's like, we also wouldn't it be have missing hilarious duck. if we if we abducted their cow? Just like they draw in the cartoons. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like never cows. know. Something yeah, like we're missing two cows and. My other siblings corroborate visiting their house from time to time and meeting these cows. Now, when I went there, these cows were long gone. And where they went, nobody knows. Chapter 6, The Astronaut. He woke up and the first thing he told me was like, Daddy had a bad dream. He was like, there was an astronaut. And I was like, that doesn't sound like bad to me, you know. He was like, and the astronaut took me outside. And we went up the, up the road so he can show me his spaceship on top of the roof. He had to take me far out to show me how big the spaceship was. Yeah. You guys have missing Somebody cows. I actually saw a spaceship. We're missing two cows and... <laughs> One 
one day, my brother and sister-in-law were headed into town to get some items. As they arrived back home, they noticed that their cows were nowhere to be seen. And they were legitimately perplexed by this. Did somebody steal their At cows? At first they Did thought somebody... that somebody had stolen their cows. My which thoughts exactly. does happen. But according to them, based on the amount of time that they were gone, they don't believe that a thief would have time to wrangle those cows, load them up, and take them with no one in the area noticing. We never correlated this to any type of paranormal activity. This was long before I ever visited the house. And it was actually during our podcast where I connected the dots and I was like, hey, I'm just saying, you guys had cows, they mysteriously disappeared, you're on a ranch, there's like this skinwalker thing stalking you, I don't know what happened to the cows. Upon reviewing this footage recently, I realized that there's one detail I left out. And it has to do with the bad guy. When asked to describe this bad guy, not only did all of the children agree that he was indeed a coyote, they often described a detail that none of us knew what to make of. Whether he was peering through the window, talking to my niece, or inside the house, there was one thing the children were certain of, and that was that he always carried a gun. One day, Whoa. my brother's son, Luke, who was four or five years old at the time, came to him and said, I had a dream last night. He can show me his spaceship on top of the roof. He had to take me far out to see, to show me how big the spaceship was. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, really? He's like, yep. And he had a gun. Like, I kind of wonder if he did, like, go outside. I don't know if it happened, if it was a dream or not. He's never explained a dream to me like that before. My brother and sister-in-law said they were outside of their house when they look up and they see something in the sky. Oh, man. Well, and was and it was after that we saw the, the cloud? There. It was before that. Before that? Yeah, it was, it was just before that. We were just like having a good time around the fire and we turn around and we see this perfectly square flat cloud. It wasn't a cube, it was a flat square cloud hovering. But it was on such a clear night. like. Where yeah. we live, it's so rural that you can see all the stars at night. Yeah. And when it's a clear sky, you can even see the Milky Way at night. Yeah, look, you see, like, oh, wow. you see everything. Amazing. And it was one of those nights where you could see the Milky Way, mm -hmm. except this one cloud over our house. The only cloud in the, the sky. The only cloud in the sky. That is so bizarre. It's like straight up Curse the Cowardly Dog script. Yeah, it, it, it was <laughs> that, that cloud was no more than 50 feet above the house. Yeah, it was close. It was, it was low. And then yeah. it's New Mexico, so it's Mexico, breezy yeah. all the time. And the cloud never moved. Yeah, it was breezy that night. It and just the cloud stayed, there, stayed there. 50 feet above our house for yeah. hours. And then it was still there and we were like, 
All right, let's go inside. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know what this was, nor do they. Just another strange thing happening in the middle of nowhere. My mom and I have both seen like dark spirits, shadow type, but they're always black. But we see them outside sometimes, like all around. And I think it's because we live so close to Indian grounds could be it, and that could be what the coyote is. Because I don't think the, uh, the coyote has visited in quite a while. The last thing that was mentioned by the kids was the astronaut, mm -hmm. which I think might be the coyote. I'm not sure. Me and mom had both theorized that the coyote and the bad guy could be old Indian spirits. Right. Um, outside, because of be everything it, yeah. around, but then told us astronaut story and then we saw that cloud and I was like right so there's so, saying, the, what if it could be alien so your your first experience was uh the man right Justin. yeah my first theirs. experience yeah, yeah. Justin's. um but she through has known about this for like a couple of years yeah okay so I realize that this is getting confusing because they have so many kids. They have six kids. And just for the sake of the story, I'm gonna have to lay them out here. So we have Luke, who is Justin's biological son. And then we have the rest of the children that are Brianna's biological children. They're coming to get him at night, all the time, with his gun. And he was gonna shoot him. <laughs> um, and it was to the point that he would not go outside to play during the day even without my presence. You know, you don't want kids up your butt all the time when you're trying to clean the house and it's summertime, we live in the country, so I was trying to get him to go play outside and he was not having it. So that's when it started. Oh, yeah. And then Whoa. started. And our younger daughter. Is our younger daughter. And then she started seeing... The coyote. The coyote. And she called him the bad guy. But she also said that he is a coyote. A with coyote. a gun. Wow. But they always have guns. Right. Everybody's recounts. The children's recounts. Because we haven't seen this. Hmm. They all have guns. In describing his teacher, Don Juan used the word Diablero. Later, I learned that Diablero is a term used only by the Sonoran Indians. Wow. It refers to an evil person who practices black sorcery and is capable of transforming himself into an animal. A Why bird, the kids can see a dog, like the a coyote, they can't, they can't or any other creature. Coyote with the gun. Coyote. This is what happens when you leave the matrix. Pay close attention. The last part is surprising. When you are in the process of awakening, you will read. By means of it, it goes on all fours. The Yi Nalushi is a form of Navajo witch or skinwalker, otherwise known as an evil medicine man or woman. The legend of the Yi Nalushi is not well understood by non Navajos. In some Native American lore and mythology, the coyote is referred to as God's dog, sent here to observe man. The coyote was also a supernatural trickster who Western Indians believed was the decider of fate. It is also believed that the coyote brought the gift of daylight and fire to the natives. The details of the legend of the coyote vary from tribe to tribe. In some, they refer to the coyote as the creator himself. In others, the coyote is a messenger and a thief, often depicted as the typical coyote. 
but in others, this coyote takes a more sinister appearance. Since creating this series, I've had a few people reach out, either claiming that they're from the same area or somewhere else in New Mexico, saying that they too have either had or heard of similar encounters with such a being. Wow. The very first episode of this wow. series focused on the bad guy as described stuff. by my niece in late 2019. To reiterate, she was about four or five at the time and probably the most convincing yet anecdotal evidence that this wow. coyote was not a figment of her imagination is the pictures. The clip you're about to see was a small video that we made asking Evie some questions. Looking back on this today, I would have avoided doing so considering she's just a child and could not consent to being questioned in this way. However, there is one thing she said in this clip that is very important. I say a bad guy. Where? At my middle at the window. At the window? And then what does the bad guy do? He turn my pictures off. Oh? He ran my tech. My pictures off. Oh, I tore your pictures off. My brother and I did not take that claim seriously, as there was no reason to at this moment. But sometime later, as we were discussing the events that happened at this house, the subject of things being moved around came up. When my brother says that one day he walked into Evie's room, and every single one of her pictures was off of the wall and piled neatly on the bed. I believe he reprimanded Evie. Evie denied this, of course, as kids often do when they've done something wrong. But one of the things that he said was that he found it really odd that the thumbtacks were in a pile next to the pictures. He said it wasn't uncommon for Evie to drag one of the kitchen chairs across the house if she needed to reach something. Why no? Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this day, there were no chairs in her room. As he stood there, Staring at the pile of thumbtacks, oh. he imagined for a moment Evie standing on a chair reaching for the pictures, which were, according to him, pretty high on the wall. As he thought of this, he couldn't conceptualize Evie doing anything but snagging the bottom of the picture to get it off, and the thumbtacks okay. would have remained pinned to the sheetrock. Meanwhile, this thought rested in the back of his head, but he never really thought too much about it. It was at this moment, during our conversation, where I paused him right. and reminded him what Evie had said in that clip. Right, how... What you're about to see is a real-time reaction to something strange that we found. I remember point. this day, my brother barged in the room and told me to grab my camera. I can turn anyone into a beach bomb. I am a verbal host. To the wall. What the f it's a circle with a star and two moons. What's that mean, you're rich? I know, right? <laughs> well, it typically is a pentagram. But right. Dude, what the f All right, it's kind of weird. What the f 
<laughs> and it's like embossed into the wall. And it's painted over. Maybe we could review video before and see if it was there before. Right? I wonder if uh, we can see what, like, Google what it means, you know? Now I'm going to be looking all over this house for <laughs> right for symbols. symbols and shit. Yeah, I just found it. Wow. <laughs> this is all totally real. Nothing here is fake. Says love. It's like love etched into the. And then it has an arrow, and then I don't know what it's pointing to. Wow, mm. uh, that's weird. Huh. That's weird. We just noticed that. I wonder what happens if we, if we, if we like take it off. Take it off. It says triple moon symbol. Initially, seeing these symbols freaked us out. At first glance, you can't help but think that this is some sort of demonic or evil symbol. However, contrary to our assumption, this symbol is not demonic at all. In fact, it's a protection symbol, referred to as the Triple Goddess, represented by three moons, a waxing moon, a full moon, and a waning moon. The waxing crescent intended to symbolize the three phases of womanhood. But this symbol isn't your typical triple goddess. According to my research, the pentagram in the center may add another layer of symbolic meaning, blending the concepts of the triple goddess with those represented by the pentagram. The pentagram, traditionally, is a five-pointed star with various interpretations. In many pagan and Wiccan traditions, it is a symbol of the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. And it's often associated with sacred and mystical protection. By placing the pentagram within the full moon phase of the triple goddess symbol, there's a fusion of meanings. This could suggest an additional protective quality. Clearly, whoever placed these symbols throughout the house did so intentionally making them semi-permanent, which, in my opinion, could suggest that a prior resident and practitioner of pagan or Wiccan traditions may have also been a target of the coyote leading them to place these symbols around the house as a form of protection. It's been about three years since they lived at this house, and even longer since I've been there. When asked about this house, the kids do still recall all of the chilling details. Even more frightening, when asked about the old house, my niece Evie, who was significantly older than she was at the time, adds a detail that she could never quite articulate when she was younger. Do you remember the, the uh, Padilla place? The old house? Okay. Oh, I only remember a lot. Okay. Well, do you remember the, that I was trying to get you in trouble because all the pictures were torn off the wall? Yeah, because the coyote. Oh, wow. What do you remember about scary stuff that happened there? I know that a wolf came into my room. Talk to me every night. Although it's been years since any one of us was actually wow. at that house, wow. my brother and sister-in-law do visit the area quite often. And one night, quite recently, 
They were staying at a relative's house close by. When Brianna was awoken by one of their youngest, who had yet to be born during the time of the events we've discussed, screaming and crying. When she rushed toward him to see what was wrong, what he said gave her the chills. Mommy, there was a wolf, a bad, bad wolf. That didn't give you goosebumps. I don't know. Shocking. Wow. Jeremy Sanchez is the ghost toe spooks that I was telling you about, aka Skeleton Man. Justin and Brianna Sanchez were also brother and sister in law. Guys, that was. That was something else. That was very spooky. And you know, it's the, that kind of content. Like I, I, I came across this content not too long ago and I've been itching to wanting to, to put it together and to play it for you guys and you know, just to do a reaction on it and uh, just finding the time and just finding the opportunity. And I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm, I'm gonna get this done. I, I have to share it with you guys because there's a lot of people on this channel and there's a lot of people in general out there that that lay claim to potentially seeing a skinwalker, right? You know, or you hearing about these wolves and coyotes, you know, walking around on their hind legs and um, like human-like and terrorizing, scaring people. I mean, it's just absolutely freaky. Yeah, there's a lot of creepy stuff out there. Um, so yeah, you know, this is incredible great video I, I, I you'll, you'll notice that in a lot of my reaction videos I'm playing little clips from from ghost toe spooks and uh, definitely definitely pay them a visit subscribe to the channel um, and enjoy their content they make wonderful content and I'm, I'm happy to share it with you guys and hopefully you guys uh, definitely like this video and if you guys haven't already I, I hope you guys smash the like <laughs> subscribe and and please comment i'd love to and by the way when you guys i'm we're getting a lot of comments on this channel but when you comment maybe just put at the end where you're from you know that that would be nice and i'll, I'll give you guys a shout out for that as well so uh yeah well that's all the time that we have for you guys today I, I, again i hope you guys enjoyed this it was uh it was a pleasure sharing it with you guys I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And um, please comment. Tell us where you guys are from. You know, subscribe, like, comment, share. And um, until next time. And in the meantime and in between time until our next adventure. I can't wait until that happens. I hope you guys have a good one. And don't do anything uh, crazy to yourself. All right. Take care. Stay safe. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.